The question of the accuracy of ancient Egyptian vases attracts widespread attention, and I decided to devote some time to it. But first, I need to outline my position, which is as follows. Only facts and logic. Neither official nor alternative historical science adheres to them fully. This has led to a complex situation. Answers are needed. Research must move forward, not turn into fascinating stories, although the emerging horizons are far more interesting than what either side offers. So, let's begin. Existing input data. Measurements of some stone vessels have shown high manufacturing precision. Measurements of other stone vessels have shown craftsmanship at the level of manual labor. Conclusion. Vessels vary. This is understandable, as they were made over an entire era. Moreover, an evolutionary progression can be traced, but that is another question. Right now it is necessary to compare authentic stone artifacts with those that demonstrated high precision, assuming they belong to the same time period. The best source of authentic vessels is the famous collection of Djoser. To do this, we will use the archaeological report on the excavation of the vessels from the galleries beneath the pyramid. It is commonly stated that tens of thousands of vessels were discovered there. This is not the case. The report actually refers to fragments, as can be seen from specific lines of text and photographs. The majority of the vessels were made of clay. However, there were also hundreds of stone vessels, including pieces made from soft alabaster. Only a small fraction were made of diorite. Moreover, Djoser collected vessels from many sources. At the time of discovery, inscriptions on the vessels indicated that they belonged to different owners. This is an important point. There are only hundreds of authentic vessels, and even fewer are intact and of high quality. This fact suggests that they were not as common as is often claimed. The idea that there were vast numbers of them is convenient for obvious reasons. Now, let's proceed to the direct analysis. In the photograph, there are five vessels. The image quality allows us to examine details on the three central ones. First vessel. The handles are different, and the drilling is asymmetrical. Next vessel. The same observation. One handle has drilling almost at the center, while the other is offset. The vessel has thick walls, which is evident from the neck and the drawings. Above the handles, the vessel is flat. Next. The handles are of different sizes and positioned at different heights, there is no symmetry to speak of. Thus, out of three vessels, all three have flaws. This is entirely normal for Egyptian artifacts. Virtually every sarcophagus, statue or vessel has imperfections, especially in areas that are not easily visible or accessible. Now, let's examine a vessel from the Cairo Museum. At first glance, it appears perfect. However, under the handle, a flaw is visible a small protrusion of the stone left after polishing. Upon closer inspection, even the upper rim is not flawless. Minor imperfections serve as a marker of authenticity. Common characteristics of Egyptian stone vessels. Handle drilling is often misaligned, and the handles themselves may differ in shape. Most handles are straight, rounded ones are rarer. Drilling diameters vary. Polishing is imperfect especially in hard-to-reach areas. The inner surfaces are roughly finished, and the wall thickness lacks high precision. The rim is rounded, sharp edges are absent, including on the handles. The outer surface lacks regular concentric polishing marks. Instead, irregular scratches are sometimes present, even in a vertical direction. The surface is often cavernous, possibly due to erosion or the manufacturing process. Interior surfaces show distinct traces of hand finishing techniques. Pre dynastic vessels exhibit even rougher craftsmanship. The transition to the base is usually smooth, sometimes featuring a small border. Material composition Diorite is the predominant hard stone used. Alabaster was the preferred soft stone. Breccia occupies an intermediate category. A specific stylistic consistency is observed in the shape and positioning of handles, examining the ultra-precise vessels. Unfortunately, high-quality photos from multiple angles are scarce. However, a few do exist. Across all criteria, we observe a different level of craftsmanship. Uniform wall thickness. Flawless polishing. 
sharp edges. The handles are drilled symmetrically and crafted with precision. On the vessel itself, there are distinct tool marks in the form of concentric lines with uniform spacing, both inside and outside. Such marks are absent on Egyptian vessels for a simple reason. Even if the blank was rotated during production, it was not rigidly fixed. As a result, the scratches vary in spacing, diverging, and merging. The low placement of the handles and the overall shape of the vessel appear to break the established, stylistic norms. The sharp upper rim and sculpted base suggest a different approach from traditional Egyptian craftsmanship. There are no high-quality images of the other two vessels, whose measurements also showed exceptional precision. However, it is clear that they are made from the same type of stone, granite, which is relatively rare for Egyptian vessels. They also share a distinct stylistic identity and exhibit identical craftsmanship quality, suggesting that they were likely made by the same artisan. Conclusion There are two distinct groups of vessels. A general group, which matches in tool marks, stylistic execution, and materials with other known artifacts. A separate group, distinguished by different tool marks, different stylistic features, and different stone types. This suggests that these high-precision artifacts belong to a distinct category. Issues with the research data. Several critical questions remain. Why aren't measurement results for other vessels provided? Why are there no high-quality multi-angle photographs of the high-precision vessels? Why is there no analysis of tool marks? Possible explanations. The simplest explanation, these vessels were made with modern equipment, specifically a lathe, including models from the previous century, which were already capable of high precision. The argument that such artifacts wouldn't have made in modern times, because they lacked value, is weak. The actual number of such vessels is far smaller than commonly claimed, as demonstrated earlier. They could have been crafted as a hobby project, as a gift, or with the expectation of increased value over time. Some vessels may be authentic, while others could have been introduced later. It is also worth noting the existence of similar vessel replicas on the market. This does not imply that these artifacts are necessarily forgeries. Rather, it highlights the difficulty in verifying the provenance of specific vessels. Archaeological excavations were documented with photographs. If the stone texture of a vessel matches an excavated artifact from an officially catalogued image, that would be a strong argument in favor of its authenticity. Second possibility. The vessels were created thousands of years ago by an unknown civilization using unknown equipment. All later examples would then be Egyptian attempts to imitate the divine craftsmanship of these artifacts. However, this raises several contradictions. Why didn't the Egyptians preserve the original style when copying? If they were truly imitating superior artifacts, we should see a completely different pattern, one where all vessels follow the same high-precision form. Why do the drill marks and tool traces on the sarcophagus lack the same periodic structure seen on the vessel? How do we explain this? Were the vessels made with ultra-precise equipment, but drilled manually? This is possible, but even manual tools leave periodic marks. The traces should not be fundamentally different. Alternatively, if the tool marks on the vessels and other artifacts match, where is the comparative analysis? If such a correlation exists, it would be a strong argument. But, without data, the claim remains unverified. Final thoughts. I would love to uncover new historical and technical insights. But for any hypothesis to be valid, it must align with the rest of the evidence forming a coherent logical chain. I acknowledge that the very idea of making stone vessels is unusual, and indeed resembles an act of imitation. Once the tradition was established, its continuation is understandable. But where did the initial concept originate? That said, the notion of a vessel carries deep cultural and religious significance. The desire to create them from stone could have arisen naturally. It's possible that some authentic vessels do exhibit exceptional craftsmanship. However, the key factor is not just quality, it's the tool marks. These traces reveal the true manufacturing methods. And that is what truly matters. Thank you for watching and subscribing. See you next time.